somebody, a company, I, I don't know who exactly installed this, uh, these free wind turbines in this place because it's quite windy. And unfortunately for this person or this company, the, due to the, the type of wind turbines that was not fitting with the law, apparently they didn't get the feed-in tariffs. Therefore, it was not worthy for them to, uh, to maintain them and to produce electricity. So the discussion with KEP, the, um, the provider of electricity in Kosovo, mm -hmm. is status quo. Uh, uh -huh. So yeah, we have three wind turbines in Kosovo, but they are not producing energy. One of the problem, maybe one of the main problem, it's not easy to quantify uh, which source is the most important, mm -hmm. but definitely the two coal fire plants of Kosovo. So the two coal fire plants that are producing 90, 98% of the energy in Kosovo, uh, they are maybe the, the main source. Uh, they are, but they are not the only problem. If you come in the winter from, I would say, October, November, mm -hmm. uh, you feel it, you smell it, you smell it in the city center. Even if then not in the winter, you, come, you can come in the summer and you will see sometimes on the cars, you will see that kind of dust. Yeah. This, this dust uh, is not maybe the, mo the most dangerous one. It's, it's a, I would say, a big size dust. Mm -hmm. But what you don't see is a fine dust, like the yeah. mi particles there. Particle uh, matter that yeah. we can see. Unfortunately, uh, nothing has really been done. We don't see a change. This is a problem. We don't see a real change. Uh, the other issue is uh, we don't have a lot of data. It's a young country. It's young data. Uh, we don't know if it is if it is really worse than before, or better than before. As you can see here, we have the uh, power plant Kosovo been near to us. That is that one, no? Yeah, that is this one. Yeah, this is this is the new one, and there is a, a older one. It's Kosovo. It's over there also. So you have two yes. power plants. Yes. Uh, the older people mm -hmm. uh, feel it first, you know, uh, and the kids, of course, they get sick like uh, easily, you know, like uh, every three months, you know, and they, they had to, to take uh, these medicaments and uh, these stuff, you know. And, and they go to the doctor for these uh, diseases? Yes, of course, but mostly the doctor said like, okay, this is virus, you know. I used to run um, every morning mm -hmm. before going to work. And uh, when I came back, I was feeling this, 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 uh, hard to breathe thing and like cuts and like I, I had like small small black dots coming out of the throat which is yeah, very dangerous really dangerous and do you check it with a doctor or something i was to the doctor and he suggested me to have uh, honey with the lemon and everyone thought it's from the winter it's from the cold uh, and then we found out it's uh, actually from the air, bad air quality. For example, I, I didn't know at all why I was tired during winter. Yeah. Why did I sleep that long? Why was I coughing? Why was I sneezing? Why was I sick? It's scary because it's coming again. It's getting cold and November and December are in January pretty close and we're gonna have winter and snow and people are gonna start doing it again. That's the worst, so, uh, that's the worst thing. time. It comes again and it never stops, as you can see. <laughs> the air is not something that is here, is not there. The air moves. You have to make uh, things before the air is polluted. It's very usual for people to, to know and understand what the problem is. Uh, people, they, they, they walk through the street and they don't know it's polluted. Okay.
Want het is hier verschrikkelijk. Uh, als je nagaat dat uh, zo'n 60% van de kinderen onder de zes jaar astmaklachten heeft. Mm -hmm. Die komen ergens vandaan. Hè? En we zitten dus al jaren boven de norm die hier landelijk en ook door de stad zelf is vastgesteld. Ze weten, de stad weet, het is een heel luid street. Je ziet geen twee windows, just to shut it out. Er is nog veel meer traffic. Coming. Dus de louder het wordt. Uno de los, de los distritos más contaminados y en donde hay más eh, centros educativos, lo cual es una contradicción en sí mismo. ¿no? El ruido puede ser eh, soportable o no, pero la contaminación es constante, siempre, siempre está. La contaminación aquí siempre está. Hasta que no llueve, y entonces baja al suelo, eh, siempre está la contaminación. Tú la puedes masticar un día, de, un día de verano, un día de invierno, que hace tiempo que no ha llovido, masticas la, la contaminación que hay. Yo sé que estoy hablando contigo y estamos teniendo una conversación, pero la oreja la tengo aquí. Que llega un momento que pienso, supongo que me está hablando y nos estamos entendiendo, porque si no llegará un momento... Que... Cuesta mucho aislarte y decir... Así afecta tu atención, ¿no? Claro. Uno de los problemas que tenemos es que el ayuntamiento dice que no es verdad que hay contaminación aquí. Quizá cuando vinimos a vivir lo que pasaba es que entonces la, había, cada día llegaba, venía una patrulla de policía y había más o menos un control. Había, alguna hora estaba, había más gente, pero de, de repente aparecía la policía y, lo, y, 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 el, y controlaba y entonces el ruido de la gente ya desaparecía y ahora no hay control. which it's basically trying to see how you engage people into this idea of participating on sensing their cities, what we call participatory sensing. And we already have 25 participants who join it to become part of this pilot. These are participants which we are aiming at training so they can become the community leaders of the other two pilots. What does it mean? This means people meeting every week in our place, basically, uh, looking at an issue that they proposed that they had on their neighborhood, which is an issue about noise. Cuando algo no lo entendemos, nuestro cerebro se queda en ese estado que es no lo entiendo, y ese estado de no lo entiendo no nos gusta. Y esa sensación de que no nos gusta es lo que nos hace pensar que es un ruido. Esta vibración supera el nivel bastante a esta. De hecho, las frecuencias bajas y muy bajas pues, eh, son como son vibraciones realmente. Esas vibraciones son las que eh, atraviesan las paredes también. Normalmente, los sonómetros, las escalas con las que se miden los, los decibelios, um, se utiliza una escala que se llama de decibelios escala A, DBA. Se utiliza esa escala que básicamente lo que hace es medir ¿no? la presión sonora, pero le aplica una corrección de modo que si esa presión sonora está en frecuencias bajas, que nosotros no podemos uh, entender tan bien, lo que hace es que las atenúa de algún modo. Dice, no, les voy a dar un peso menor. Entonces la escala oficial te dice que está más bajo porque Exacto. su su medio no incluye las Exacto, partes más bajas. Pero sí, el Ahí está, 70. ¿Y en la escala C, que captura todo? En la escala C, vamos a ver. Estamos casi a 90. Ahora con esto también. ¿Y a cuánto está el límite de la escala oficial? Creo que en 70, ¿no? En, en espacio abierto. ¿no? Okay. 
espacios urbanos abiertos durante el día, sí. 70. Por eso ahora mismo estamos al límite de Ahí está, sí, lo que sí. pasa. Bueno, te puede llegar a molestar o no molestar. Si te gusta que haya gente y todo eso, sí, sí. aquí estamos bastante dados a eso también, ¿no? a, la, a la fiesta, a las celebraciones, a las reuniones. Y esto va junto con ruido muchas veces. ¿no? No, es que esta Pero vibración mira. sí que penetra en casa, atraviesa las ventanas sí. y además hace unos, unos nodos en casa, en, en ciertos sitios sí. donde se amplifica además. Y ahí es un... Sí, sí, sí estas vibraciones realmente las la sientes aquí, ¿no? Sí, es... es no, no es, es tanto de, de escuchar una cosa, es como... Sí. diferencia ya, ¿eh? De hecho, el ruido disminuye con el cuadrado de distancia. So, I had seen in my, in my previous research that community champions were key in terms of um, carrying the flag for an initiative and convincing, uh, persuading others to participate, to take part. It's like a, it's a soft skill, but it's a form of leadership, community leadership. These are something else, not exactly community champions. There are maybe what Christian Yayone calls a nudging class. Basicamente, hemos pensado en el tráfico. Buscar una relación de cuánto ruido produce el transporte urbano. Class of people that get it very quickly, that this is, this is something important, and that they're enthusiastic and they, 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 they are uh, a collective in themselves. Y por otra parte, tratar de relacionar los niveles de ruido con el estrés. La idea es un poco cómo podríamos hacer que la gente sea consciente de, de un nivel saludable. The reason why we decided to focus the first pilot around the community champions was because we felt like we needed to test the methods and the technologies mm -hmm. before fully focusing on an, addressing an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, we knew that if we were focusing on a very specific issue, there was going to be a huge sense of urgency. We have the title of the vecinos of the Plaza del Sol logran terminar con el problema de ruidos de la plaza. <laughs> the goal now for the coming pilots where we can test the new sensors is that we focus on matters of concern, things that people care about for example, noise pollution in Barcelona or air quality in Amsterdam, so that we can really engage these groups of people that feel like they have a problem and therefore they have a need. Our cities are being flooded with sensors and most of that information is centralized and, and people never see it. You know, it keeps the, the traffic lights running, it keeps energy moving through the city. Um, and so it shapes our lives, but not in a way that we can reach out and touch um, and not in a way that we can influence. And I think the real power is to put these tools in the hands of people. So basically that's why it was so important from 2013 to until now, 2016, to investigate how people really use this technology. Uh, these are very novel tools, as you know, and we didn't have a lot of knowledge with regards to how users were, in the end of the day, using them. And out of um, all these ethnographic studies and usability studies, we basically found out that a big percentage of people disengaged with the project because they couldn't set up the sensors. They didn't have the skills to very easily get the sensor to start streaming data into the platform. And I think that what's crucial there for us is to put a lot of energy in making the onboarding toolkit. The average person tends to see technology in two ways. It's either a, um, a consumer product you know, right? Something that is, is easy to use one click and go, like something that a big corporation, the Googles and the Apples of the world might do, or it's something far too complex for them to even care about, right? If it doesn't look like an iPhone, it's not as easy to use an iPhone, I don't want to use it. 
Whereas when we're talking about citizen science, we're talking about often things that look very complicated to use, things that the average person probably wouldn't want to spend the time trying to understand how to use. We've spent the last few months redesigning uh, an installation process, what we call an onboarding into this um, sensor, which, uh, which tries to resolve some of these things, right? It tries to, to explain what's going on in easy to understand terms, use very graphic visual language rather than just um, just words. Os recomiendo solo una cosa que no está aquí, la añadiremos, que subir al máximo el brillo de vuestra pantalla antes de hacer esto. The Netherlands has a large uh, air quality problem. We are a very flat country, yes. very densely populated. So we have three of the biggest harbors in Europe next to each other. And that brings a lot of industry, a lot yes. of infrastructure, a lot of traffic. So we have a lot of uh, sources of pollution on a very, in a very small country. What do you think of the oil in the world? First, I must say that the impact of the oil in the world is the boomerang. The Venice is a very good thing. 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 The Venice is a very good thing limitet e tyre, na është dashur që të sensibilizuem grupet të caktuar të populatës. The country is really poor, it's the poorest in Europe. Uh, also, uh, we have the number of uh, cars, almost the highest uh, for capita, for uh, person, and uh, the, no, the years of the car or the uh, age of the car is really old. Prandaj, nëse filloni me bronhitet, bronhitet kronike, bronhiektazit, pneumonit, me e, abstem nga puna, kemi mandej vështrisit të tjera të rënjës e imunitetit, kemi prekjen e sistemit e, limfatik, sistemit nervor, kemi prekjen e sistemit reproduktiv. We have a lot of uh, coil in Kosovo, and that's normal. As a poor country, we will use it the cheapest way to yeah. produce electricity. And what what is interesting in the policy making about the environment, because the uh, power plants of uh, Obilic are the uh, main uh, source of industry pollution, because they produce not only the smoke and particles from the burning, but the ash of the coil mm -hmm. is just put it in a big... Uh, uh, like a yes, ashes. like a mountain of ash. And uh, during the winds, because we are a wally, we don't have uh, something to, to, to stop the, the ash. Uh, all that ash comes to Pristina, that is the biggest city. Uh, you can see that during the winter, the snow, after a day, if you don't have snow, will have a, a, a line of, of a ash, layer. A, layer of, a layer of ash. For PM2.5, mm -hmm. the, the, the limit, the World Health Organization guideline is exceeded three times. That's a lot. If you take this, this number, so three times, in this part of Pristina, where there is this device, it means that uh, I, According still to the World Health Organization, it means that uh, the risk of um, premature mortality is 15% higher. So when people tell me it's getting better, 
yes, but it was really, really bad before. Casinos, McDonald's, restaurantes, eh, boleras, piscinas, parques acuáticos, son ciudades enteras que están atracadas en el puerto de Barcelona y que nunca apagan los motores. Siguen contaminando todo el rato mientras están aquí, no se conectan a la red eléctrica, que es una de las demandas que hay ahora, sino que están emitiendo eh, todo el rato gases y el tipo de fuel que consumen estos barcos es de los más perjudiciales para la salud. También aquí hay mucha circulación de aire. ¿eh? Es decir, no, es difícil decir la contaminación del aire cuando hay mucha circulación del aire. Hay mucho movimiento. No, no es un buen lugar para la medición. ¿no? Aquí no, aquí precisamente no, por, por eso mismo. Lo que está diciendo es que las partículas por millón son más altas. Pero es una herramienta. Puedes empezar a comparar cuál es el, la relación, por ejemplo, entre los niveles de, de, de dióxido de nitrógeno, que están relacionados con la, la combustión de combustibles fósiles, y el ruido, que es obvio en teoría, ¿no? Porque Donde puede hay más ser... ruido, habrá... Exactamente, exactamente, ¿no? Right now we're looking at the bio indicators that are one of the key elements in defining air pollution in Pristina mm -hmm. because apart from the tools, the technical ones that we use to sense air, We also have a really good envision of how air pollution is affecting uh, bio life, especially trees and forests. So before this start, so we can compare the air pollution in Pristina to the winter season. Okay with you? Yeah, I agree. Uh, so we are measuring the PM. Yeah, when the color is green, it means that it's the uh, air pollution is it's quite uh, low. It's yeah, okay. and then the, it's, yeah, it's okay. So when you measure in the winter, it turns yeah, it, red. It, yeah, it, it's turned to red, and then it's more than 100, 120, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Our body has an immune system and when it senses bigger particles like PM10 or bigger, it has like, it acts by coughing or sneezing, so it gets those particles out of your system. But PM2.5 and smaller are those particles that cannot be sensed by the body. What is the level now here? It's green uh -huh. for now. In winter it goes to 200, 140. Oh, it's a big difference. It's a big difference. Do you have any diversity in this diversity? I have a lot of diversity in this country. I have a lot of diversity in this country. I have a lot of diversity in this country. Now it's yellow, so it's, meh, it's good. Okay. It's not bad. When it gets red, or orange or red or purple, it gets worse and worse. Purple is poisonous, red is dangerous. Clear, we know that we are in a dark centre, dark state, dark burning and dot, and the people have a microclimate in the so that the cost of the power is much more low to get my dark so offer burning and dot. Wherever there is burning place or construction or traffic, the air pollution or PM 2.5. It gets higher. When you are capturing data as a citizen, if you put a sensor in your balcony, you are converting the infrastructure of the city. If we look at the sensor within the house, at 7.26, we have a sense of 57.95 decibels. Y si vamos al sensor exterior, el que está aquí en la terraza, tenemos ahora 68,86 decibelios. Pues métele un kilo de, de sal a una comida, porque te gusta la sal, ¿no? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Si tú te comes un, un kilo de sal, te morirás. Sí, sí. Es un tóxico de primer nivel. Esto es como todo, o sea, la ciudad también es un sistema de proporciones. Sí. Entonces hay unas reglas del juego. El tema está, digamos, en que tú tienes que hacer compatible el descanso y la vida normal de la gente claro. 
con el divertimento. Lo que marca el sensor de afuera son 68 decibelios. Uh -huh. Y el de dentro marca 59 decibelios. Si tú me pones en una plaza a 70 personas con, digamos, con alcohol, Exacto. Eh, el nivel, digamos, de decibelios va aumentando a medida que el alcohol va entrando <risa> en sangre. Entonces, ¿qué ocurre? Ocurre que eso es invivible. Son las 10 menos 10 de la noche uh -huh. y en, en el sensor de dentro tenemos más de 66 decibelios. Y en el kit exterior tenemos 75 decibelios. Right now we're measuring particulate matter, uh -huh. 2.5, and it's already over the level, so we have a, about 40 particulate matter for meter square. The point is that due to the airflow and the uh, air conditions, uh, we have established that pollution does not stick around here for quite a long period, but steam and heating carries the pollution for about two to three kilometers in the direction of Pristina, and that's where Pristina gets actually the pollution from. This is like one of the key sources. Uh, we try to chase, in a way, particulate matter uh, patterns starting from here up to Pristina. And we notice that throughout the way, the closer we would get to the city outskirts, that's when we get the higher values. Because the closer we are, this still hasn't started to drop. Once this uh, spread of pollution starts dropping, that's when we get higher levels. Esto en la, en la antigua Grecia, que ya lo sabían todo, ¿no? distinguían entre el ciudadano y el idiota. Idiota, que viene de idios, que significa uno mismo, como idiosincrasia, ¿no? Idiota era el que solo se preocupaba de sus propios asuntos sin participar de, de las cuestiones comunes. En cambio, el ciudadano es el que, sin renunciar a su individualidad, que, sí. que la tiene, eh, destina un tiempo a participar en la asamblea, a, a compartir esfuerzos, ¿no? a que las cosas funcionen mejor. ¿no? Últimamente han aparecido artículos en el Guardian y en, el, sí. en distintos medios que equiparan eh, la, o sea, a cuántos eh, vehículos normales de gasolina sí. equivale un, un crucero y se están manejando cifras astronómicas de entre 35.000 y 50.000 eh, por, por la cantidad de emisiones que genera. ¿no? get a little bit more uh, afraid and your uh, uh, nervous system you will react with the increasing of the blood pressure and uh, increasing of the blood uh, uh, of the heartbeat and increasing of the volume of the lungs because it's going to start taking more air uh, to, to get the same amount of oxygen. But because of the fear, you need more oxygen because you produce, your organism produces adrenaline and uh, uh, the muscles uh, and all the other parts that prepare the organism for... for, for uh, uh, El primer propósito de una especie es permanecer en el tiempo. De hecho, nuestro cerebro podría llegar a tener un sentido como, como un sistema de anticipación que nos permitía asegurar el futuro. El problema es que nuestra cabeza loca, con el uso de energía y tecnologías, nos ha adentrado en una senda en donde nunca antes habíamos tenido tantas incertidumbres sobre el futuro.
uh -huh. incluso de eliminación de la especie. People live on average 13 months shorter just through air pollution alone. And almost nobody knows this. And you have these official measurement stations and they kind of the experts and the experts say, well, this is how it is and you better believe us. And there's not a time anymore for that. So I think there's a, there's a big urgency and a need for people to take the matters in their own hands. And fortunately they can because the technology has become so cheap and so small and so powerful that was what, what was once the, the place for experts only is now a place for all of us. After these projects, do you feel like you're feeling more experienced or more, yeah. uh, uh, how do you say, self-confident to yeah. use technology uh, for this kind of uh, Absolutely. issue? Absolutely, because this is uh, uh, ideal for uh, uh, measurement during the day and the evening, because the other measurements are, um, yeah, are global. They're just a period of time, a month or a year. Yeah. And this is real time, you can see it on the spot, uh, what, uh, uh, what it is. Yeah. And then it's added to all, but in, in the, uh, like there's enough uh, uh, or a lot of traffic, the uh, output is high okay. and uh, you see it immediately. This is really on the wall of the, the building. This is the best uh, uh, position. You have to go down really because uh, up uh, it's, uh, the, 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 uh, the pollution is diluted. Uh, Want normaal is dit een, uh, overdag zeg je een rustige straat? Het is zoals nu. Ja. Het is, er, is niet eens, er is niet eens veel verkeer. Maar. Je hebt, uh, hangt die? Zo, misschien is het handig om dat nog even daar overheen te dus steken. Ja. Uh, ik bedoel, zo, zo hierover? Nee, want dan, dan blokkeer je zijn sensor. Vanaf hier? Ja. Dan geef ik hem door aan de andere kant. Ja. It's, it's, so, uh, it's so difficult to, to, to let him see the light as it were for the most practical things. And for traffic here in this middle-aged middle age town, you can say, what does a car do here? Yeah. Take your bike, it's healthy, it's noiseless, it's cheap, it's no, uh, con no, not consuming any room, well, yeah. some, but not any, uh, uh, everything, oh. and it's not stinking, and it's not taking Fossil fuel. <laughs> en uh, waarom was het voor jou uh, belangrijk om mee te doen aan zo? Uh... Nou, omdat ik uh, oh, zelf ook lichamelijke klachten heb. Ik ben heel vaak uh, kortademig ja. en ik heb geen goede uh, bloedsomloop. Okay. En uh, ja, daardoor ben ik vatbaar voor luchtvervuiling. Okay. Dus met dit weer bijvoorbeeld, als het zo bewolkt is, dan, uh, ja, dan, dan merk ik dat. Dan ja. ben ik ook, mijn lichaam is zwaar. En uh, ja, ik adem anders. En is ik het ook duidelijk... wel erger geworden naarmate je hier... Uh... Ja, ja. 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 Is de laatste jaren is het veel erger geworden. Oh. Ja. Het had een bijzondere insteek, omdat ik wist dat deze straat uh, opengebroken zou worden. Mm -hmm. En uh, er zou dus geen verkeer doorheen gaan door deze ja. straat. En dat was het bijzondere. En we hebben zelfs die week dat die straat uh, dicht was, hebben we ook gemeten. En ja. dat zag je dus letterlijk real-time dat dat effect had. Ja. Geen verkeer heeft dus wel effect. Ja. Wat was toen jouw meest oh, urgente ja. vraag? Nou, kijk, hier aan de voorkant, het is nu is het heel rustig, dat je denkt, waar hebben we het over? Mm -hmm. Maar in die tijd uh, was het drukker, omdat daar verderop was een bedrijfje... waar ongeveer dat witte autootje staat. Yep. 
En die was aan het laden en het lossen op de weg. Dus constant waren hier uh, files. Ja, okay. En met al die diesels, nou je weet niet wat je meemaakt. Ja. Want ik rook het in mijn huis en dan had ik soms zo'n hoofdpijn. En het leuke vond ik, omdat je het real life kon meekijken, ja. dat ik dan, nou, toch wel een paar keer in de week keek ik dan. En dan was het soms, was het echt, dat aan de voorkant was het schoner dan aan de achterkant. Ja. Dus uh, ja, dat, dat vond ik eigenlijk heel schokkend. Ja. En voor, voor, voor mijzelf was het, was het bijzondere dat er dus uh, op het moment dat er geen verkeer was, dat je eigenlijk de achtergrond... Uh, vervuiling ja. uh, aan meten was. En dat was het bijzonder. Uh, dat lag dus ver boven, uh, onder dat niveau van uh, de 40 uh, microgram. Met een bike you're, you're, you're giving a solution for a lot of things. Banning the car out of the town, please. En ik heb ook wel stenen vervoerd en zo, want ik doe alles met de fiets. Ja. Voor mij is het een auto. We are designing technologies for individuality and narcissism, and that's what you get. In fact, we know that we can design for altruism, we can design for communities, but apparently that's not what, you know, what companies actually want to do. I think you get what you fund, and what's actually being funded now is technologies that foster narcissism, individuality, look at me, look at me, look what I do. I think that we have to ask ourselves probably a deeper question, which is why, you know, the, the purpose. So it's like, a, what is, in, in this philosophical question about what's the purpose of our, you know, of, of our life? If it's like a, to enhance our individual capacity, it is to create a community, it is to consume as much as we can while we are here. And it's actually to leave a better trace out of you, uh, you know, during your lifetime. So that, those questions, I think, need to come back, uh, in my opinion. And I don't want to get too philosophical, but if you don't ask those, those questions when you are designing those technologies, then you will end up you know, being part of the same loop. No? The Instagram team, the Google team of technology, one of the smartest people in the, the group of the smartest people in the world, and they're they're focused on how to make money, and they're focused on how to optimize search, or optimize marketing, or optimize a, a picture sharing app. Right now, all these people are trying to figure out ways to build the newest and best and most entertaining pieces of software. Yet, we're not using software in ways that can better our lives. And for me, that's a big reason why I came aboard Making Sense, because there's so many apps out there that are just, just, and just pointless. <laughs> Frankly, just pointless, you know? We, have, we, we all have apps in our pockets about how I can share a picture and get 15 likes and throw a couple hashtags and I get a couple hundred more likes, or I can, I can have a Facebook post that can be shared across the world and while doing that Facebook knows exactly how to market materials to me because I spend time on it and the whole ecosystem of software I think is about how to entertain and we have so little people and little projects focus on how to better our lives How can we design technologies that actually foster the best side of us, of ourselves, foster um, pro-social behaviors, yeah. collaboration, active participation, democratic participation? We have a responsibility, and uh, what we do have consequences. Yeah. I liked the idea that I could do something good. Yeah. 
Again, technology is just a tool. I completely agree, and then technology is not good, it's not bad, it's not dangerous or it's not just fun. It depends on how you use it and why you use it. And then what I like about this project is that actually I can speak about a technology with everyone. I mean, uh, to, to explain, uh, to, to be able to, to explain what I'm doing with the technology. Because if someone is asking me, okay, what are you doing with your sensor? I can, uh, I can explain it. They can understand me when I say, yeah, we need to measure the quality of the air or uh, the, the, the noise level because everyone uh, felt uh, sometimes uh, the, 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 the need to complain about, I don't know, a bad smell on the, on the street or too noisy, uh, you, there is a concert. Uh, and, uh, so, and with what we are doing, uh, yeah, well, with this technology, we are developing tools that you can use for your need. Yeah, exactly, for whatever you want, you and your community, and you can go to the government or you can not go to the government, anything you want to do yeah. with it, you know, and that's, that's the best thing about making sense. It's powerful, <laughs> I think. It's very powerful. I, I was talking with, uh, with this um, girl from a magazine, very known, well-known magazine. She was saying, this, you know, like uh, in some point, you know, we are in the risk of becoming um, the pets of our smartphones. So the smartphone will tell you where to go. It's gonna tell you what to buy. It's gonna tell you who to talk to. So basically, you are like the pet of your of your phone. No? Petabytes circulating now of interactions, people sending messages, video broadcasting, tracking the movement of of bikes, cars, buses. So you have all, all this massive amount of data. You know, kind of circulating in the city and then I don't know if we are aware of that and if we, we, we need to be aware of that as citizens. Así es que vamos a centrarnos en el tema del soroll que Barcelona realment és bastant important. Eh, el carrer Balmes, per exemple, perpetuament eh, superem eh, el nivell de, de, la, de la OMS i superem el nivell permès per la comunitat europea. La idea d'aquests sensors és que, com que no tenen un certificat oficial, el que, el que li dona l'oficialitat és la quantitat de, de sensors que hi ha. Amb aquesta quantitat de sensors que hi ha li dona una visibilitat. No? Dius, bueno, si hi ha 25 sensors que estan mesurant que hi ha un soroll superior a la mitjana, potser tenen raó els veïns en dir que hi ha aquí amb el soroll. No? En canvi, el de l'Ajuntament, potser, jo que sé, està mig un parc, no? els sensors de l'Ajuntament molt, molt, moltes vegades estan mig un parc, que dius, i per què posen un sensor mig un parc, però bueno. Empezamos a ver, ¿sabes? se analizó de que era el ruido lo que, donde estaba el foco de discusión. Y a partir de ahí, con los sensores, se empezó a obtener datos. Entonces, cuando tienes unos datos en tus manos, tienes la posibilidad, tienes el poder de manejarlos. Pues son las 11 y 20 casi, 18, y fuera estamos a 80 con 8 decibelios. Era una plaza donde los niños podían salir a jugar, donde sí, había mucho ruido, pero era ruido de niños. ¿Cómo podemos comunicar a gente que aparentemente le no le interesa nada lo que le vamos a decir, que es el silencio. Y si veis, el sonido en Plaza del Sol tiene una curva un poco rara, porque cuando debería irse, ¿no? que es a partir de las 7 de la tarde, al igual, empieza a subir. Really thinking about sensing as just part of our being in the city. You know, it's part of perceiving, it's part of seeing that data, the insight from data should form part of the conversation, part of the experience of, of being in the city, of being a citizen. There's no point in having just one sensor, putting it outside of your window and then thinking, oh, I'm a smart citizen now. No, the only way that we can become smart is when we do this uh, together. We invest in our knowledge, we invest our time, we invest our efforts, we go out, and then we might become something that's more, yeah, more, 
uh, how to say, we might become more powerful than we are actually now. Mira, son las 12.16 del sábado 13 de mayo y en el interior tengo 48,85 decibelios uh -huh. y en exterior tengo 82,32 decibelios. Hola, son las 8 de la noche y la noche promete. Ya hay guitarras, gente cantando, pasándose muy bien y en casa no podemos escuchar la televisión porque hay un volumen eh, desorbitado fuera. Tenemos que pensar cuáles son los factores que tenemos que tocar para, para que otra vez cambie el uso de la plaza, que es finalmente lo que influye, eh, la causa del ruido es cómo se usa la plaza. Vale, una pregunta, hay mucha diferencia si pasa un coche como ahora mismo está pasando de escombrarías o de bombeo sí. o de sí. o sea, que el objetivo es una mica de making sense, ¿no? Doncs veure com viu la gent en alguns llocs perquè hi ha, hi ha llocs que hi ha molt soroll i hi ha gent que no n'és conscient. Els que estan aquí fora ara mateix no, no, no són conscients que hi ha gent a casa que s'està queixant. You can be an angry citizen and sit back and do nothing, or you can be uh, maybe angry about something and feel and feel an opportunity to make something better. Uh, I think because of the simplicity of it. And because it, it's, it's not, it doesn't start with an angry citizen or something, but it's, it starts with uh, children and could also start with adults that are really curious about what's happening around them. And, for, and um, I think this curiosity, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very positive thing. And um, from there, of course, you also see problems and uh, you want maybe to solve those problems. But it starts with this, this uh, really research-driven, curious mentality uh, that you actually want to initiate. Uh, you, you would like everybody to be, I would like everyone to be like that. It's, it's also an openness, uh, an, 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 a way to look at the world in a very open way. This car is driving for here. While this car is driving, these people are talking. The sound that they make these people and the car va arribar a aquest botó d'aquí. Que viene de juerga a sentar-se ja con sus... No, és incivisme puro. I depèn de quin soroll faci, transmet tota la informació cap aquí i el posa de diferents colors. Una cosa és ir a passear i sentar-te en una terraza. I aquí fa que el soroll es converteixi en monedes i les monedes fa que puguem, que puguem mantendre tot aquest, aquest circuit del soroll en peu. També a través del mòbil hay una manera de fer una prueba homologada en Estados Unidos que mide tu capacitat auditiva. Con lo cual este dato també lo podríamos correlacionar ¿no? i ver si la gente que vive en la plaza pierde eh, capacitat auditiva más rápidamente.
What's really important for me is the um, seeing the communities, and some communities are pretty angry. Yeah, they're pretty you know? angry, it's they're true. Not, they're not necessarily uh, coming because they have an interest in the technology and they like to play with that. Um, they come because they have a real problem. Yeah, and quite often they've had a problem that's been, um, they've been trying to solve for quite a long time. Yeah, so a project like Making Sense comes along and they think, Ah, they can solve it for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, what we discover and what I'm really passionate about is that um, we can't solve it for them. There's an issue that we're always running away from, and it's a political issue here. The most beautiful thing is that the youth is doing this, not the policy. This is coming from the down to the policy, and I think it's going to go to the top. Dotia sidočov, to je trai to je dotia ambijentet na nivelin komunosti Prištinas. Nuka čen nivelet ose čuška čene prezentume mesipas air quality index et viti nekalun. Nivel cilj još prezentu se vse kaj institucione tiera cilja tematin. Sigurno se do ojače ja juči je mat. Edhe besoj që nuk duhet me u kriju paniku të këqytetarët. We had a table with leaflets and the air sensing devices uh, and uh, we, were, uh, we were measuring at the moment mm -hmm. and showing people at the moment of uh, how bad uh, air quality was and it was continuously bad. <laughs> Si e shin një roli në këtë në shkinsar për tri që ta e quim tri që jenë të angazhu në këtë drejtim të siksisar. Po, po, kjo ka qenë qëllimi Komunës Prishtinës, qëllimi kyq i vetëmi Komunës Prishtinës ka qenë vedisimi qytetarve për ndotin ambientit. Ne si pas legislaturës aktuale nuk kemi të drejt me ndonë me ndonë një parametr ose me ndonë një matës konkret ku kishi me alarmu qytetarë. Për ato është agjensia për mbrojtin e e mjedisit edhe Ministria për mbrojtin e mjedisit. Por ne si komun kemi pas intensa e në kryesore ka qenë që ti vetë desojmë qytetarë se kanë do tjetë ambientit. If we talk about the December campaign, we had dolls in the square and they were holding signs with sayings such as my lungs are exploding or I can take it no more, something like this. And it was such a strong hit for the people the, the police came and they were asking, do you, have a, do you have a permit to do this? And... Are you had it? We had a permit. Yeah? We had a permit. We tried to use uh, um, uh, all the data to get uh, something done about the, the pollution in, in the industry and in uh, uh, 20 other streets in Amsterdam. So uh, we tried to uh, um, convince the, 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 um, uh, the city to, do, to act upon uh, the figures and not to do nothing. And it's also a big uh, source of frustrations for of citizens because they don't realize that uh, even if you, uh, if you have a very nice, good, decent citizen science measurement, there's no legal value attached to it. Exactly. You, you can't use it in, as an argument in a discussion with uh, the government or the municipality. Yeah. Now, one of the, the, uh, the challenges is to make people understand that they can do interesting things with citizen mm -hmm. science measurements, but they can't use it for legal purposes. And you've been measuring also the air pollution here, no? Yes. With air beings and... With air beings, with tubes, uh -huh. with citizen kits. There was like more, you know, methods that mm -hmm. we use here. Air pollution uh, uh, problem that mm -hmm. uh, most of the, of the older people uh, are, are getting sick from the uh, uh, breathing um, health, you know, problem, like cancer. Yeah, cancer? Do you have a lot of people with cancer? Yes. Well, in the future, uh, I believe. I believe if uh, you know the government, if uh, 
uh, the members from the this power plant and the first and the second will change uh, you know uh, the filters you know and maybe we 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 will not get too much uh, uh, problem from the cancer you know mm -hmm. the level of cancer would be low lower es moralizante ver que pese a que insistimos intentamos luchar para corregir esta realidad pues por parte de la administración tenemos poca ayuda por no decir nula ha puesto, unas ha puesto donde las escaleras unas jardineras para, para impedir que la gente se siente allí muy frustrante estar en esta situación porque después de todo lo que hemos hablado con el ayuntamiento tras el proyecto de Making Sense y, y con el tema de los sensores y saber que, que realmente es, eh, que estamos soportando unos niveles de ruido muy altos, vemos que el problema de la convivencia no, no se soluciona porque no hay suficiente voluntad política por parte del ayuntamiento. Y esta es la razón por la que no nos vamos de Plaza del Sol. No queremos renunciar a nuestro lugar de paz diaria que queremos alargar. Nowadays, there's so many discussions about democracy and lack of representation. And I very much agree, but also I think that people forget that since the French Revolution until now, the idea of democracy, the idea of sovereignty, is that the citizen is above the, the state. It, 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 it happens that now we tend, we think like we are below the state, yeah. but we are really not. Creo que para muchos lo más importante es que sacarnos de víctimas de aquí, como lo hemos vivido durante años. If we if we doesn't uh, raise our voice now uh, and the youth, of course, you know, I think the government will not do anything. The people are sovereign. And the people come together to create the state, to manage what they have in common. Mm -hmm. But this thing, this apparatus, is actually below us. We have the power. Yeah. And I think that the technologies, this has somehow been forgotten. And the technologies that we have now allow us to hack this malfunctioning democratic system and bring this power back to people. And 
and I wanted to be a part uh, of this uh, youth organization and to raise awareness and to tell people that uh, we can fix this together because it's not only us, it's going to be you together with us that we're going to make a change. Thank you.